trains coming. Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me at Ermston Station for a very special set of Bimbles that I'm calling Morris's Manchester. It's all based on a book by Phil Gattenby called Morris's Manchester. My copy's a little bit out of date these days. It was published in 2004, and there's a revised edition from 2009, but that's out of date now as well. So I thought we'd do a set of bimbles, showing all the locations in the book, and how they look nowadays. So let's stop messing about, and let's bimble. Back to the old house. Magnetically brought me to you Visions that cut through the cold to my heart Feelings of warmth now is you Feeling that coming from you Bursting to blow at the seams of my heart As if this was love that I felt Falling for somebody else Taking my eyes from the ground Turning my heart upside down As if this could change all the past Fixing the bruise from the last Time that I felt anything As if this was love that I felt As if this was somebody else Sparks brought back to light from the dark, broke out in shimmering waves to my heart. CP a tint, but the same, familiar in simplified ways, broke down the lily white scars to my heart. As if this was love that I felt, falling for somebody else. Taking my eyes from the ground Turning my heart upside down As if this could change all the past Fixing the bruise from the last Time that I felt anything As if this was love that I felt As if this was somebody else That I felt falling for somebody else, taking my eyes from the ground, turning my heart upside down, as if this could change all the past, fixing the bruise from the last time that I felt anything, as if this was love that I felt. As if this was somebody else And so we reach Kings Road here in Stretford. And at 384 Kings Road in Stretford, you'll find the childhood home of Stephen Patrick Morrissey. That's where he would have started his New York Dolls fan club and wrote into the enemy to tell him how good Kimono My House was by Sparks. And it's at that same front door that Johnny Marr would have knocked and asked Morrissey, did he want to start a band and go down in British musical history? Thank you. 
Also on Kings Road, you'll find the Iron Bridge, as referenced in the Smith song Still Ill from the debut album, and also from the compilation album Hatful of Hollow. That's my favourite version. It's from a John Peel session from September 1983. Under the Iron Bridge we kissed. Let's bimble. Seeing as how we're passing through Charlton, it would be remiss of me if we didn't mention some other Manchester trivia just down there. Speaking about Manchester musicians as we are, we've come to Keppel Road and at 51 Keppel Road you'll find the childhood home of the Brothers Gibb, the Bee Gees. They lived here just after they came over from the Isle of Man, before they went over to Australia because they got in trouble with the Rosers. They formed their very first skiffle band, the Rattlesnakes, in that very house. At the end of Keppel Road you'll find a mural to a Dennis Pratt. He died here in Charlton of heart failure. You know him as Quentin Crisp, the man that wrote The Naked Civil Servant. And as a Smith related fact, Morrissey worked as a civil servant, not a naked one. He described that time as a fate worse than life. Typical Morrissey. Quentin Crisp returned to England in 1999 after living in New York for many years, but originally he was from Surrey. He used to live in London as an openly gay man at a time when that was very frowned upon. If anyone knew a bit of Piccadilly Polare, it would have been Quentin Crisp. Anyway, it's turning into one of those dreaded sunny days, so we best meet by the, um, that's Bimble. work at the time maybe it never did a mistake that made the distance or a trying way to live 
maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms and electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms in a white hot glow leaving white cold scars left bare and on show just to prove they were ours maybe it worked and so bimblers you meet me at the cemetery gates southern cemetery gates it was the subject of the Smith song, Cemetery Gates. Morrissey used to walk around Southern Cemetery on dreaded sunny days, gravely reading the stones, with his friend Linda Sterling. She was from the post-punk band Ludus, but she's most well known for her artwork. Her artwork is on the front cover of Orgasm Addict by the Buscocks. There are quite a few famous graves here at Southern Cemetery, but one grave was much more makeshift and it was actually in the allotments at the back of the cemetery. That was the grave of Jean Jordan, at least for a while. Jean Jordan was picked up in 1977 by a man in a Ford Corsair and taken to the back of the allotments and killed with a ball-paned hammer. That man was the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe. As he made his escape down the M62 back to Yorkshire, he realised he'd left his hammer and the £5 note that he'd paid her with. He thought the police would be surrounding the area and someone would have found the body. But nobody found the body for at least a week afterwards. So he actually returned. He found his hammer, but he couldn't find the five pound note. And he got angry and apparently he mutilated the body with broken glass. A few days later, some men were working on the allotments, shifting some rubble. And one man ran over Jean Jordan with his wheelbarrow and discovered a body. That man's name was Bruce Jones, but you'll know him best as Coronation Street's Les Battersby. The police found the purse and the five pound note, and eventually that's how they caught the Yorkshire Ripper. There are actually some famous graves within the cemetery though. The grave of Ellis Lowry, who did all of his beautiful paintings, and the grave of Daniel Adamson, the managing director of the Manchester Ship Canal Company. You also have the grave of Tony Wilson of Factory Records fame and Granada TV. And the grave of Rob Gretton, that's the manager of Joy Division and New Order. As well as their producer, Martin Hannett, wasn't actually able to find his grave. I'd like to say that we were going somewhere more cheerful, Bimblers, after we've been in the cemetery for so long. But we're off to Bedsitland. Let's bimble. Or maybe it's the time that you closed both your eyes And you pouted your lips as you waited for mine In the soft red glow of your soft cold arms Serotonin burnt holes through my veins to my heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it's the time that I wanted to say That my limbs won't move more than two feet away From your day glow side luminescent sparks I could burst into flames from one beat from your heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is And I quite like how it is What do I get for my trouble and pain? A rented room in Wally Range. Lyrics from the Smith song Miserable Lie from the debut album. Morrissey chronicles a love affair between a young couple, ending with them having a bedsit in Wally Range. Wally Range is bedsit land here in Manchester. It's where all the bedsits are. 
We're currently sat in Alexandra Park, which is in between Wally Range and Moss Side. It was built in 1870 and it was designed by a fellow called Alexander Gordon Hennell and it was named after Princess Alexandra, that's the Queen, to King Edward VII's King. It used to be home to a collection of large cacti that was donated by a Charles Dara. Charles Dara made his money in lead foundries and in his spare time he collected cacti. They used to be in their own special hot house which had a coal boiler to keep the cacti warm. I like the word cacti, can you tell? The park became the centre of the community and a meeting place. In fact, Keir Hardy had one of the first Labour Party rallies here in Alexandra Park. On the 24th of October 1908, they had a demonstration for women's suffrage where one of the demonstrators, Kitty Marion, set off a bomb which damaged the cacti house. Oswald Mosley, you know the bad guy from Peaky Blinders, Britain's pound shop Hitler, he had a rally here in 1960 against immigration. But the Buzzcocks put all that right in 1978 because they had rock against racism here in Alexandra Park. No doubt full of ruffians. Rush home ruffians. And if you want to hear all about the Rush home ruffians and a vicar in a tutu, you better tune into the next episode. These things take time. Music